Uh, after two months of having no voice, I am back with the Junior Hockey Network Hockey Show. Our first guest back after a long layoff is none other than uh, SIJHL Fort Francis coach Wayne Strand. How are you today, Wayne? I'm good, Jay. Thank you. Glad uh, glad to be back a part of the show and and good to uh, hear you talking and and uh, back on your feet here. And, and with, like I said, we, we've talked uh, throughout, uh, like I said, the last two months, but not, not on voice, just through text or emails. But we know you don't miss words with your team sitting in fifth place in the SIJHL with a 12, 21, 1 and 1 record, 2, 6 and 1, 1 in the last 10. Can you talk a little bit about um, the, the last 10 games and your thoughts? Well, I, I guess coming back from. Um... After Christmas break, uh, you know, our first game back is was uh, not the the game we wanted. I think I believe we lost like six one or something. Um, if you uh, if you look at the score, you you would have thought we um, you know got outplayed bad and and beat bad. But um, if you look at our effort through that game, I. We had opportunities. We just we didn't capitalize, and um, Dryden's uh, a strong team in their own building, and and they come out fast, and they, and they jumped on us early, and and took advantage of that, and um, you know, really up into our last couple games against the Norskis, I I've liked how we played, and. You know, sometimes I, when when we don't play well or or I think we need a message sent, I, I'm pretty freely about saying that. And um, you know, but we've we've played uh, Dryden now, I think twice, uh, the Norskis three times, and Minnesota. Really, only capturing one win out of those those games and um well we've been in every hockey game and uh leading up to the last two and um I just thought Saturday here against the Norskis we didn't we didn't have a lot of uh compete in us and again last night kind of this kind of the same uh effort um just not the Winning battles, not being the first to pucks, um, allowing too many odd man rushes, and you know both their goals last night are, are two on ones, and they're obviously correctable things, but um, you know when you put your goalie in a a situation over and over to to see a lot of rubber and have him uh, at the top of his game. Uh, I'm battling for you. I think that we just we got to do more to to help that. And um, um, Jacob Ninjenko's played uh, a lot over the past few games with Matt Booth uh, nursing an injury, and and uh, he's given us an opportunity to be in every game. And I just feel we need to give more to him to to help the cause and having success. And like you said, I guess the the same old story you've you've mentioned lately, like in your post game comments about complete complete compete level. And like I said last night, you said right now we have too many guys finger pointing, not being accountable for their own game. Guys are struggling, want to blame everybody else, and guys are struggling because of their own game attitude and work ethic. Now, is that the compete level? Like this time of year, the compete level should be high with only twenty one games left in the season, but. Is it just something not not working in the dressing room, or just when it comes to work ethic on the ice? Well, uh, um, I think a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I guess in mentoring, mentioning the the finger pointing or whatnot, it's just maybe frustration a little bit set in. Um, some guys are putting a little bit, maybe too much pressure on themselves, and and the points aren't aren't coming or or they're you know maybe in a little bit of a slump and um i think what needs to be realized is at in those situations 
the best way to get out of it is hard work and you know for some of the guys that are maybe in slumps or are not producing like they want to I think it's easy for them to look at a line mate or look at a teammate and say you know what are you doing how come you didn't pass me the puck and um we're we're a team at this point that I guess doesn't need that. We need to be a tight knit group. There's a little bit of bickering going on in the in the locker room between guys that um maybe feel other guys need to give more of an effort and whatnot and um we we're trying to definitely nip it in the butt and and be on the positive side of things and um you know, I think we're a, a team that our record doesn't uh, f- reflect our ability. Um, I think we are capable of doing more. It's just we need to become, we need to realize that, I guess, as a whole group and, and go out there nightly together and battle the other team, not compete against one another and and battle one another at this time. And special teams right now, you're you're ranked fifth uh, in power play and penalty kill in the SIJHL. Have you seen an improvement, uh, I guess, say the second half of the season with your special teams? You know, with our PK, I like last night, I thought it was the best part of our game. Um, there was lots of effort. Uh, we didn't allow them a lot of opportunities or, or let them create a lot of good scoring chances. Um and, you know, I haven't checked today, but I think it's still uh, over 80%. and um, 81.1. What's that, sorry? 81.1 for your power play. Yeah, and for our penalty kill? Uh, penalty kill, 17.2. Oh, no, I got it backwards, sorry. 17.2 for power play and 81.1 for uh, penalty kill. Sorry. So with our PK, you know, you'd like to be around 85%, but it's... It's a good part of our game. We go through, you know, stretches where we where we have uh, four to five games not allowing a goal, and and then it seems, you know, we play we play one game and and we allow two or three on the on the uh, penalty kill, and you know we're we're uh, a little bit better on the road, I think percentage wise with our PK, but. We also take uh, more penalties on the road. I think sometimes uh, we lose our concentration or our emotions get a little bit out of out of whack, and and we succumb to some retaliatory penalties, which isn't like us. And um, so, uh, yeah, maybe there's a little room to to improve on our PK, but it's definitely something I like about our game. Our power play is, is just inconsistent. Um, through the last few games, we've we've missed some key guys uh, due to sickness or or injury, and um, it's it's something we continue to work on. Uh, but I think the main thing with our power play is kind of goes hand in hand with our game, and when we're not as intense or or competing as hard five on five i think that sets into our power play as well and and affects it and um you know maybe we have to look at uh widening our range of players that play on the power play and giving others an opportunity now uh moving forward here and like say watching last night's game it was like say when there was hits they were physical hits and might be a little bit when you're when you're when you're down by two and you take those physical hits. Uh, it, the retaliation does come out, and sometimes it it does it does happen. And sometimes that's not a, a positive for uh, for the for the penalty kill, is it? Well, definitely. Uh, you know, last night we we take two minor penalties. Uh, you know, five minutes into the game, and even guys on our bench are, are upset over them because. They weren't smart penalties. One's right in front of the other team's net, and one's as a result of 
you know, just a, a bad angle in the neutral zone or a bad turnover that leads to, um, I guess, putting yourself out of position and and then taking a penalty. So, um, you know, you just, you got to be in the right frame of mind and get yourself motivated on a nightly basis to, to play at a high level. And talking about the one in front of the net, it's something like at this level, at the junior A level, is if you're going to cross-check somebody, don't do it when nobody else is around and the referee's standing right there, right? <laughs> I totally agree with you. <laughs> you could kind of see that that penalty coming. Um, those two are battling the whole shift, and, and you know, maybe our emotions got the best of us at that time, and and we get the penalty, obviously. And like I say, you, you talk about your record of two six one and one in the last ten. But like last night, two one game. What positives can you take out of a game like that against the North Seas with like only a two one uh, a loss? Well, I I do think we got um, better as the game went on, and if you maybe compare last night to the first time we went there in I believe it was January 9th. It was kind of the same game. They jumped on us early. Um, maybe our game wasn't what it needed to be in the first. Um, Ninjanko played well to to keep the game. 2 nothing that game and then one nothing last night. And, um, you know, so throughout the game, we, we did get better. Um, in the third, we... Once we scored, we we had a good pushback. Um, but, you know, even with the goalie out I, in the shift before that, I think we had, you know, four or five shots. But, you know, if, when you're pushing back with about five minutes to play and, and you really needed the pushback for the entire 40 minutes of the second and third period, um, it doesn't give yourself a lot of time to, to get back in the game. And, you know, so it was good to see us us battle in that situation. And there was a, a few different guys out on the ice at the end of the game that, um, you know, created some good opportunities, which was good to see. And, and um, you know, like I said, our, our PK was good. And I think if we could just realize how hard we work when we have less guys on the ice to, to uh, I guess, eliminate their opportunities or their offensive chances uh, and just bring that to our, our, our normal game five on five and, and power play. Uh, I, I think, you know, we could have more success as a group if we did that. And uh, you, we keep up bringing up uh, Jake. Like you say, he's, 1295 minutes he's he's the he's in the most in the league the next closest is Bailey um Bailey Smith's from the Norskis and Jake's like I said allowed only 80 only 84 goals but like I say when you're when you're playing 24 games the second most in the league so far this season it puts a lot of pressure on a young man doesn't it yeah it does um for sure and and you know I think especially with a team that's trying to to look up or or move up if if possible in the standings or or just get ourselves prepared for um the stretch running going into the playoffs uh um he's been a huge part of our team uh you know last week he had to go three and four nights and and maybe saturday was was feeling that uh a little bit, um, but when you you know you only have the one goalie, and and you don't want to put your affiliate goalie in a situation where, um, you know, it might be too much for him. Uh, you got to push him a little bit, and and Jake's been uh, um, up to the task. He's you know through the month probably being our best player and and like I said he he's focused he's prepared to play and and he he's um, a bit frustrated at times uh with what's going on in front of him but he he's there to stop the puck and and 
and still give us an opportunity as a team to to have a chance to be in games and or battle back in games and um you know if you look if you've watched some of our games through the month uh especially against Dryden they've been good hockey games and and games where um we have had to battle back a little bit and and um Jake's been a big part of that and they like say can you point out anything, whether it's offensively, defensively, or special teams, where you guys can improve heading into February? Like you, in the next six days, you have four games to to, to end the month. Uh, can you comment on that? Sorry, Jay, I didn't hear the first part. No problem. Like I say, you 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 have four games in the next six days, and can you can you pinpoint at all whether it's offensively or defensively or special teams what you guys need to improve on to head into February? Well, I think the two areas that come to mind right off the top of my head are team defense. Um, and we were doing such a good job of of five men getting back to our house area in our own zone and, and protecting that area and, and not really allowing uh, a lot of opportunities um, um, through the slot area or, or middle of the net area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And most of the shots were coming from the perimeter. And I just think um, the last two games, and especially last night, uh, we've given up way too many on-man rushes. Uh, if I had to throw a number out about last night in two-on-one and three-on-two opportunities for them, or even sometimes four-on-two opportuni- four opportunities, uh, I'm going to say we're pushing like 10 to 15. Um, and that's too many... Uh, Good opportunities to give them to to create scoring chances, and um, we just need to get back to that team defense mentality, and and not being puck focused and picking up guys behind us. And obviously, we need our power play to be twenty five percent every night, and um, you know, to win hockey games, especially in the playoffs. Uh, um, special teams are certainly key, and. At that time of year, uh, sometimes it's two power play goals that might win you the game, or or even one. And um, we need to get more consistency out of our power play to have success here. And like I said, we've talked a lot so far about, I guess, the negatives and what needs to be improved on. But again, every game has some ugly moments. But since Christmas, what have been some beautiful moments that you've seen coming from your roster? Well, there's been um, different guys, I guess. Uh, step up to help the cause and um you know we've we've kind of juggled lines around a little bit and and like i mentioned earlier some guys are frustrated in what we've done but um you know i think if we give it a chance and and allow guys to to get some chemistry with certain guys I, i think good things can happen throughout our lineup um we do have uh uh a key injury out right now in Noah Love Day that will come back and we're hoping next week at some point, um, depending on how he feels. But, uh, you know, I like how uh, Isaac Barron has kind of rose to the occasion and in, in jumping up with Nick Lucas and, and Brett Hakala. Um, we, we formed a line of uh, Nick Hakala and uh, um, Chase Robodeau and and Reese Hoffner and those guys have really uh, connected with one another and, and having fun together and working hard. And, and they've, uh, you know, on some nights been our, our uh, guys who've got us going and, and kept the bench motivated to, to be in hockey games. And so it's good to see that the growth of some players and, and, you know, finding that right mix of, who can play with who and, and, you know, who can produce with who. And, um, you know, there's still going to be some tinkering in the lineup uh, heading into the end of the season. But, um, you know, as a team, I I think we've proven we can play with everyone. Um, you know, our schedule through this part has been uh, uh, pretty heavily against Dryden and the Norskis. But, um, you know, there's, one of them is going to be our opponent in the first round, and 
and right now we want every game to be a, a battle or a dogfight against them and and uh, I think we've proven we can achieve that against them and and you never know uh, what can happen coming down the stretch here and building our team and, and developing our team a little more and, and then once the playoffs come around in the first round. And, and Friday, the 25th, again, talking about the Dry Nice Dogs, they come into town sitting about 400 penalty minutes more than you, you guys and sitting fourth in, in points, about 12 points ahead of you guys. The Ice Dogs are probably <coughs> the most physical team in the SIJHL. You guys, when it comes to height and age, you're about the same, but they have about 15 pounds of average on, on your roster. How do you deal with that physicality to be successful Friday? Well, I, I think you just have to match that intensity. You know what they're they're gonna play like. They're an aggressive team. They you know they forecheck two guys hard. They their defense step up and, and play the body and and you just have to do little things to counteract that and getting pucks by them and and using your speed to to beat them and um, you know we've had some really good hockey games uh, with Dryden this season and. And you know the last two going to a shootout in a um, overtime, and you know maybe we're not coming out on the right end of the battle, but um, we know that uh, we can compete with them. Um, we know that in the first period or the first ten minutes they're going to come hard and and try and uh, uh, beat you with the physicality and and work ethic and, and get a jump on the lead. And um, so you've got to kind of weather that storm and and be prepared just to battle. And, you know, Dryden, um, you know, they play hard against everyone, but uh, in our games for the most part this season, they've they've uh, played us hard, but, but uh, not to the ex- – maybe not to the um, battle – worthy as maybe them in the minors or them in Thunder Bay and and um, they've been good hockey games so I don't expect anything less and we know it's going to be a, a, a hard fought game and, and we got to match that intensity and, and capitalize on their breakdowns and, and hopefully it leads us to success. And when you say intensity and and the the pace of the game right now could benefit you guys playing them on Friday with them having a a shorter bench, doesn't it? Uh, for sure. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know that a couple guys went down against us the last game. Uh, I know a lot of teams are experiencing some illness and, and guys being sick right now. And, and you know, last night we had a, a shorter bench as well with only 10 forwards. But um, it, it doesn't matter if they have... <laughs> 13 guys or 20 guys dressed, uh, you know what they're bringing, and, and it's a lot of intensity and hard work. And, again, we've been talking about the positives and negatives, but you still have 21 games left in the season to, again, move up the roster and maybe change who you meet in, in the uh, in the, in the postseason, and the season is nowhere near done, right? For sure, and, you know, our, our uh, we've talked a lot lately about coming to the rink every day and and working hard to to improve each and every day, and and whether that be in practice or or games, and um, for the most part, up until you know maybe the the last couple games, I have been very pleased with that. And um, you know, last night I I think I used the word uh, embarrassed that some of the guys should be of their effort, and maybe it was the wrong word to use. And, um, but at, at this point of the season, uh, there also sh- shouldn't be that lack of effort or lack, lack of respect for the game. And and um, as a team, uh, we know we need to grow a little more. And, and even in the locker room, you hear the guys talking or some of the veterans in, in what they're trying to relay to the team. And and it's not far off from uh, my thought process or the coaching staff's thought process. And um, But there's a lot of hockey left. There's a, a lot of things we can do as a team, and, and hopefully uh, 
um, you know, the, the light switch kind of flicks on and, and we come together and, and realize, you know, that good things can happen if, if we put our minds to it. And when you say the word embarrassed, I don't think a lot of the Laker fans were really impressed with that comment either, were they? Uh, no, I guess not. <laughs> uh, um, but I guess at the heat of the moment, sometimes you you say things uh, that you shouldn't or, or you don't want to. And uh, it was a word that kind of went around the the dressing room last night, not necessarily from myself, but uh, I guess a word that was in my head. And, um, you know, like I said, I did like their pushback. I just thought it was a, a little bit late in the hockey game. And... Um, if it if it wasn't for uh, Jacob, uh, you know the score probably wouldn't have been two nothing. Uh, it could have been even worse. And um, I think as a group, we we know we needed to be better last night, and uh, we did give it our all at the end of the game, and and uh, you know it just come up short. So we'll uh, learn from it, move on, and and uh, you know today's a new day and. And we got two big games against Dryden coming up this weekend. And it's true. The past is the past. You can't control it. You can control the future, but not your past, right? For sure. Uh, can't live in the past. Uh, got to live in the present and, and, you know, set goals for the future. And and hopefully in setting those goals and, and living for the present, you, you work hard every day to try and achieve them. Well, Wayne, I can't thank you enough. And, uh, Good luck in the next four games, and we'll surely uh, talk next week. Sounds great, Jay. Thanks again. Thank you. We'll talk soon.